This is not a military issue. This is not a problem you want to resolve by force of arms. It's largely a political problem. You need to attend to you and maybe help the Congolese government to address this problem. They ignored us. Fine. Ten years after that, the problem has come to haunt all of us. Yes, they even say we were accused of uh, stealing the wealth, the minerals of Congo. We are not thieves. We work for what we have and what we get. This is the journey to One Africa. Congo, Rwanda, M23, FDRR, MONUSCO, International Community, Envoys. First of all, it should be a shame to all these people that we are so many. We have so much in terms of means. We claim to want to resolve the problem. It's actually simple to resolve, in my opinion. But it never gets resolved for decades. And of Cong Congolese problems, of the problems of DRC before that, Zaire, and so on and so forth. I'm just talking about the problems of the last few decades. I'm not going into 60s, I'm not going into late 50s. No, I'm just talking about the last nearly 30 years now. You would wonder, I'm sure people should be asking themselves, how can these problems that relate to Rwanda, that relate to DRC, that relate to all these groups I'm talking about, that relate to the whole region, that relate to the powerful countries that so much talk about humanitarian crisis and human rights and all kinds of things and really speak up for wanting to resolve all this. Sit with this kind of a situation and just keep massaging it and no, no, you know, blaming everybody else except them for these problems. And uh, it's unfortunate that uh, what I'm saying, I've given a short list of parties concerned, countries and so on. But it has become so convenient for long that all problems are put on the shoulders heavily on the shoulders of Rwanda. Rwanda is always the culprit in all this. It's not a federal it's not uh, the government of Congo that should be responsible for its problems and people. It's not the UN. It's not the powerful countries. Main America, UK, France. ETC. No, it's Rwanda. It's, 
it's Rwanda all the time. And it's M23 because of Rwanda. So it still comes back to Rwanda. It's not a food error, the remnants of uh, people who carried out genocide here. It's not uh, the government of Congo for many reasons. Reasons being, I started by saying here that we, we don't have means, but, but we have weights. We have, don't have means, but we have weights. But we don't have means. And that's why, in comparison, Rwanda and Congo, there is more, much more, much, much more. Congo offers to these people than Rwanda. So naturally, Uh, these people must uh, trade carefully when they are dealing with the Congo's problems. They, they, they must even assist Congo to, to alleviate their, their pain by transferring the, the blame they should hold, should have, put somewhere else. And uh, the easiest place to put their blame is Rwanda. Um, you know, the, uh, when they go to banana plantation, because Africans use a lot of uh, many things they use banana leaves for. The, 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 the banana leaves they cut are the banana leaves of uh, short banana stems. Those who think they can keep picking, uh, cutting our banana leaves because we are short stems. Boy, you don't know how much you have deceived yourselves. Um, yes, they even say we, we are accused of uh, stealing the wealth, the minerals of Congo. One thing we are not, and that's what makes us uh, what I've just said. We are not thieves. We work for what we have and what we get. In fact, we are where we are, I think some decent progress, but not really too much. We, we still have to do a lot. By the way, also on account of the support we get from these people who accuse us or who accept that we actually do that, meaning these powerful countries, they actually give us a lot of support. And if they took time 
to scrutinize because they support other countries as well, including the Congo that we are accused so much for what's happening there. They will find they will, or they will not find a place where we give value for their money than Rwanda. They will not. I can bet on this. For every dollar they spend on us, they support us with, we will show more for it than anybody they give their money. And it is deliberate. It's not by accident. It's who we are. It's who we want to be. And nobody will take it away from us. But when it comes to trying to cut the banana leaves because we are short stems, they can or they will discover that you also provide value for money. Meaning it will actually be costly for them. Now, let me add to that. For the FDRR and uh, the affiliate groups, Rudurunana and so on and so forth. And by the way, affiliate groups means also there are some individuals either whom we have here in prison, who are brought from outside, or others who masquerade around as the so-called the opposition, whom we have just left free to mess up themselves until some point when, if need be, to take care of them, take care of them. But why do you think this program, for example, of FDRR, has been there for the last nearly 30 years? Why? Because you think it's a too complicated a problem to resolve? No. I'm beginning to believe something I never believed. But I suspected, but I had no proof and I don't want to believe it. But it's so many years that if you can't find another explanation, then you have to believe it. You can't but not believe that Actually, somebody, somewhere, wishes this problem to be there forever. Around it, so many things are played. One, it is maybe to check to check these uh, stubborn troublemakers but short banana stems. It is to check them. 
there's always something to so it's, it's maintained there. And then it spins around for the crimes associated with these people of our history, of our tragedy in Rwanda in 1994, the history before that, they start associating us with the very crimes of these people. It's like they exist because we are doing something wrong. In actual fact, maybe we share in the crime. We share in the crime they committed. So in other words, for the perpetrators and victims of a tragic history, we are actually the same. There is no difference. Isn't it the whole narrative since 1994? How we in this country are known for stifling freedoms of people, we have, you know, violate, we, we violate human rights, we, well, then sometimes when they're talking about the violating of human rights, they point to the people who are here, whom they have labeled uh, opposition leaders, who are associated with this history, that we are violating their rights. Can you imagine? The very people who are associated with genocide, well, here are some of them, many of them outside there, whom they have even uh, sometimes refused to try for their crimes, because they, say they can't return them to Rwanda because Rwanda's justice and human rights. And you know, if they return them to Rwanda, they will uh, be denied their their justice, their freedom, their human rights. And then we respond to these people and say, "Okay, if you can't give them to us, here is the evidence. You try them in your courts because you are better than us." And they still. Don't do that. So what does that mean? What would that mean for anybody who wants to think? And you don't want me to try them for reasons you, you are giving, that whether false or true? But then how about you? How about you trying them? What's wrong with you? You mean you're questioning your own justice system as well? But on top of that, they still come and uh, point fingers at us, you know? But uh, sometimes, uh, there is a poetic justice that goes on. Some, some of these people who refuse to send these people back to us, and we have been begging and showing them all the crimes, they, and they have refused, and in some cases, these people have gone ahead and committed crimes where these people you know, are holding them in their countries. And then, prompted by that, they quickly now send them <laughs> to us. Because there is a case where somebody was being accused and you no, know, we were asking how these people, 
Then this killed somebody else in one of these countries outside who had refused to surrender that person to us. Killed the person, then I think another one, another case raped somebody. And then prompted by that, they start processing to send <laughs> these people to us. So the first crime of the genocide they carried out here was not bad enough. But they are reminded by somebody violating the rights of one of their citizens. This is what I'm calling sometimes poetic justice. So, if for the last 28 years this problem has been there, and for the last 20 something, 22 maybe, the UN force was sent to Congo to deal with this situation. On top of the East, being to deal with FDRR and these other genocide you know, groups. And there is not a single day, not a single day that I know, maybe you do, that these forces ever fought FDRR to try and remove them. But they've been so keen to fight the notorious or famous, I don't know, M23. That's what happened in the 2012. And we warned these people, we were warning them, and saying, you are dealing with half the problem. The other half will come back to haunt all of us. This is not a military issue. This is not a problem you want to resolve by force of arms. It's largely a political problem. You need to attend to you and maybe help the Congolese government to address this problem. They ignored us. Fine. Ten years after that, the problem has come to haunt all of us. But of course, the easy way, again, they have, is blame Rwanda for it. That solves the problem. That's where we are now. But why wasn't this problem resolved for the last 10 years, honestly? Why wasn't it? Those M23, those who fled and came to Rwanda, we put them, we cantoned them in a camp in a former chief in, in, sorry? In Ngoma, former Chibung. We disarmed them, we gave arms back to Congo. They took the arms. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about facts here. I'm not. Now, processes started of, you know, talking to these people, how do we, what do we do with them? Where we, blah, blah, blah. And we always gave access to the officials from Congo to go and talk to these people, every time. They came here like 20 times. The last I heard of was when they said they, they, they wanted the representatives of these people and others, the, the, the majority of them were, went to Uganda. There was a bigger group. And they said they wanted to talk to them, 
to their representatives, those groups here and those groups in Uganda. They took them to Congo, to Kinshasa actually, supposedly to talk to them and resolve their problems. These people they took spent months in a hotel where they put them. And for those months, not a single government official visited them or came to talk to them. Until they decided to, I don't know whether to escape or do what, and left. Now, the problem comes back to be Rwanda's problem. When they started fighting, don't ask me how or where they came from, but we have had a moment to discuss this openly in meetings of heads of state in Nairobi, and it was clearly demonstrated to the Congolese leaders what had been going on. And the only thing they kept telling us was, no, 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 these people must go back where they came from. And then we asked them, say, where did they come from? <laughs> or, or, or what time do you mean? Because even if you assume that they came from here, where did they come from when they came here? And I asked one simple question in the meeting. I said, we would be wasting our time if we do not answer this question and we continued discussing this issue. I said, one simple question. Are these people we are dealing with, or having to deal with, Congolese, or Rwandese, or Ugandans? Fortunately, the Congolese leaders answered that they are actually Congolese. Then I said, okay, now we can have a conversation. Because my impression at first was that you were saying that these are Rwandese because they speak Kenya Rwanda. Because they are wonderful, as I hear some people call them that. But they are Congolese. These are citizens of Congo. They have their ancestral homes and things in Congo, not here. Here they are refugees. We have over 8,000 of them as refugees in the camps. So, how do we deal with this issue? How does this issue become Rwanda's issue? Just being associated for convenience. And I can see those translators, I think some people have, uh, I want them to hear this. Uh, can you see some people having problems of uh, these headphones? Can you please sort out that problem? Maybe there are those who don't want to hear, that's a different issue, but, but I, I want those who want to hear to be able to, 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 to listen to me, to be able to do so, so sort out their problems, please. Nonetheless, I will continue. For those who want to hear and for those who don't want to hear. That's what we always do. There are many people we talk to knowing that they are not listening, but we have to do a duty of, of letting them know so that there is no excuse about uh,
So, this problem, in my view, is not too difficult to address, but you have to do the right thing. I want to remind people that they have to think about how to address the FDR problem. It's been there for too long. Forget about stories being created around it. They say, no, they, they are no longer there. They came to Rwanda and then we sent them back. And Yeah, but on record also of the UN, there are those who have been repatriated over time and we received them and reintegrated them. That's why there is that uh, center, uh, is it in Motobo? They are on record. The records are there, very clear. So, that problem has to be looked at. The other problem is the so-called M23 or other groups. By the way, there are over a hundred groups, rebel groups. Did you know that? In Eastern Congo. I'm fighting for all kinds of things. I don't know some of them. So it, 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 they can't already be existing because of Rwanda. Certainly not. If it was because of Rwanda, maybe they would be together. So that problem needs to be addressed in the right context. And those problems are Congolese problems, they are not Rwanda's problems. But we can help because we are interested in a stable neighbor. Peace in the Congo or Eastern Congo is peace for us. So we can't be questioned about or our desire to have a peaceful country and region cannot be questioned, honestly. We can't. Even if for Those who accuse us of stealing minerals, if, if that were to be true, I think we can do better still by having peace. Yes. Because when we have peace, then you don't even need to steal. You would actually have, uh, you know. You know, I was talking to some very senior people recently from somewhere who are saying, you know, the Congolese are saying we, we steal their quarter, we steal their gold. And then I asked them one question. There was many, many readers. I said, there's something I know. Some people come from Congo, whether they smuggle or go through the right channels, they, they bring minerals, and, but they, they, most of it goes through here, does not stay here. It goes to Dubai, goes to Brussels, goes to Tel Aviv, goes to Russia, it used to go to Russia, I don't know where the still goes there. It goes everywhere. So I was asking them, I said, are you on the list of those who are stealing minerals of Congo? Because these things, they end up with you. For, for us, we are, we are now, they go through our country. 
where they are accusing us of stealing Congo's minerals. How about the destination? Why don't you talk about it? And, and if we, we actually deployed everything, every effort, and stopped this thing flowing, it would, the accusation would be even worse. Yeah, they would be seeing no, no, no more gold coming through here. Going to them, then they say, uh -huh, these people, they are causing problems. So what, what are we supposed to do, honestly? And then uh, there is uh, this famous uh, thing that has, you know, the, the, the I've heard of a hate speech uh, saying some of the things that uh, need to be paid attention to. One of them, the hate speech that goes on from Eastern Congo to the Western end. And then recently some very powerful people who have some good ideas of how to resolve the problem started saying hate speech must be stopped on both sides. <laughs> Does anyone understand what that means? Well, for me, I didn't, which both sides? So there is hate speech in the Congo and there is hate speech in Rwanda. This is what they are trying to say. Has it been going on? Have you been involved in hate speech, you people? <laughs> you know, and, and that these are people supposed to be helping to resolve the problem. So they must give part of the blame to Congo and another part must be carried by Rwanda. Even if both of us are not, have not been doing the same thing. So I'm saying it is simple to resolve because all it needs is just uh, avoiding being neither here nor there. You have to address the problem as it is. You have to deal with the facts. You have to deal with evidence. You have to deal with the right thing to do. As for how the, our name will keep coming up, which I can't prevent one way or the other, our name will always come up. Not because we have solicited or created or in any way, shape or form, war to happen. We never ask for war at all. We don't create grounds for conflict, not at all. We are interested in the rebuilding and the building and the building until we are where we want to be. We, 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 are not, we know what war means. I, I, I have had some people, you know, interviews and FT in London or France went Catherine, France or Teve Sank or something like that. And somebody saying, I don't rule out a war with Rwanda. You know, uh, when I used to talk to this person who keeps saying this, I used to advise uh, humbly tell him that we are actually tired of war, we need to be working together and creating peace between our two countries. And uh, because if you are looking for somebody who knows a thing about war, you come to me, please. 
I know something about it. And I know how bad it is. And, and by that, I know how you cannot have anything better than peace. So, this problem can be resolved. If, uh, if one country headed for elections uh, next year is not trying to create uh, grounds for an emergency so that elections don't take place, well, not that he, he, not that he won the first elections. As we know, so if he's trying to find another way of having the next election is postponed, then uh, I would rather he uses. Uh, he used the other excuses, not not us, because we, I don't think we. I think we have really a lot of problems of our own. We don't need to add other people's problems. Uh, but what is surprising is that I've never. You will help me to try and to, to understand that. I don't know how it comes that everybody, the opposition, the what? The, I think putting the blame on Rwanda, which the whole world seems, buys them votes. Why, why should having problems with Rwanda and votes for people? I see politics heating up in, in DRC and everyone who has something to say, whether it is uh, whoever, just keep saying, oh, Rwanda has invaded, Rwanda has invaded, since when? And if you think also that we, we have, or that we are there, even if I were to believe it, I would still proceed with asking myself a question. I say, why? Why would Rwanda be in Congo? Maybe you would find an answer. Because there is a possibility that can take us there. That means, dear, that's what you are saying. For example, let me say like this last time when, uh, you remember in 2019 when uh, FDR are invaded and attacked Chiniji and nearly shut down that place where tourists go. And by the way, we started seeing some uh, Oh, messages, uh, don't go to, to, to the east, northern part of uh, Rwanda, there is insecurity from all over the world. Maybe this is what some people actually want. So we cleaned up that mess, and then uh, this year, first half and mid, you remember what went on, uh, the bombings that took place, uh, being fired from across with heavy artillery into that place. And then, so that is a very attractive to, for us to, to actually cross the border. There's no doubt about it. I've been, uh, you know, we asked uh, 
DRC several times. I asked the president to allow us to work with their people to actually deal with the FDRR. And they refused. So I kept asking why they would refuse. He said, I told them, just be with us, we will do the work of dealing with them. Little did I know they were, they wanted to preserve them. Uh, so, and, but in the end, uh, later on in these arguments, I said, uh, when they started firing across our, our border, I told him that uh, that is enough invitation. I told the president of Congo. But while initially I, I, I was seeking invitation and to work with them to deal with our problem, actually firing artillery across the border into our territory is a sufficient invitation. That statement still stands. If there is ever any, we have been keeping quiet about some things, you know, violations, and, and again, the, when you see the statements everywhere saying, you know, uh, the, 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 the territorial integrity of Congo must be respected. I totally agree. But so must Rwanda's territorial integrity be respected. And uh, respecting territorial integrity is not just by a soldier putting foot on the ground on that territory. It's what you send to the other territory as well, even standing on your own. If you fired artillery shells across the border into Rwanda, while you are in the Congo, you have violated the territorial integrity of Rwanda. That's, that's the interpretation. I don't know of any other interpretation. So, I gave you more than you wanted or expected, but uh, I thought I needed to really do this. Um, so be clear about it. When you see things happening, you, you just know. First of all, we are not going to engage in skirmishes that could have been avoided. We are not going to violate anybody's sovereignty or territorial integrity will be respected, but we so much demand that that happens in our case as well. And uh, so people can along the border can go to bed at night knowing they have security for them to sleep all night. Short of that, we'll make somebody else spend sleepless nights. Thank you very much. Hey guys, as you're watching this video, our vision is to reach 500,000 subscribers. Hit the subscribe button, and join membership to support our channel, and join Patreon and PayPal. All the links are in the description. Do that to stand with us for this beautiful cause of One Africa right now. We do. Do not forget to sign up for the petition. The link is down below. Appreciate it. Thank you so much.